Hi, I'm Dan Augusto for GearWire.com, and this is Engineering 101. Uh, we're taking a special look at convolution reverb uh, right now, in particular, uh, how to make your own impulse responses, and that has a few different purposes. Uh, one is to take sounds outside of the box and bring them inside of the box. That's to say, you have an outboard unit, uh, for example, this old Pioneer Spring Reverb that we sampled in the last video. Um, but you could also uh, use uh, sound from a room, so basically simulate a room inside of your computer. And l in the last video, we did this using a white noise burst. And that uh, was then fed into Perfect Space in, um, in Sonar 6. Perfect Space is a convolution program by Vox and Go that comes with Sonar, uh, actually came with Sonar 5. Um, and you can feed that, um, that reverb pretty much any wave file. Um, and that has some pluses and some minuses. The plus side is that you can go crazy and get super creative with it. The minus side is that there's no way inside of it to overcome noise floors that can occur either in a room, as you can probably hear, uh, this room is pretty noisy, um, or inside of a box like, uh, like this. We encountered a pro uh, problem in the last video with the noise floor of this. We had to EQ it, and even then it wasn't perfect. But there is another way to do this, and you can do this in a, on a PC or a Mac. Uh, our particular tool today is Space Designer inside of Logic Pro. So let's take a look at how we're going to accomplish this. The first thing we need is a sine wave sweep across the audible audio spectrum. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, on an instrument track in Logic, bring up an instantiation of the test oscillator. So as soon as we open test oscillator, we hear the uh, sine wave, the 1K test tone at minus 12 dB. We can control level here. Uh, you can pick different types of waveforms. But what we're uh, concerned with is this section down here, the sine sweep. I'm going to click on that, and uh, the most time we can have is a 10-second uh, sine sweep. That's fine for us, and it's going from 20 hertz to uh, 20 kilohertz, or 20,000 hertz. Now, just as a warning, these sine sweeps, they hit frequencies that are very high, and your ears aren't used to listening to frequencies that high uh, at these levels. So you may want to turn down your monitors uh, to protect your ears. So now that I've adjusted the listening level for comfort, and also patched my SPDIF in to my SPDIF out, I'm going to go ahead and raise the level of the sine sweep to minus 1 dB. That's one, minus 1 dB FS. And also take an audio track and make the input 1112, which on my interface is the SPDIF input. So just to make sure that I don't get any feedback loops, I'm going to change the output of my test oscillator to output 1112, which is the SPDIF output on the Fireface 800. So now I can safely record arm my track, hit record, and as we can see, the timeline is turned red to signify that it's recording, and trigger the sine sweep. So now that we have our sine sweep recorded, I'm going to zoom in on it, and using slip edits, just get it nice and close to both ends. There really is no need to make it perfect because of the way that Space Designer deconvolves this uh, WAV file. Now all I have to do is File, Bounce, select a destination folder, and I'm going to create a new folder called Sign Sweep. Inside of it, name the file, make sure all of our settings are right, and press Bounce. Okay, so now I'm ready to run my Sign Sweep through any that unit that I choose. We're going to use the old Pioneer. So first, I'm going to add our sine sweep to Logic's audio window. By Apple clicking on the file, I can automatically add it to the Arrange window on my selected audio track. So over here, we have our sine sweep clip. And over here, we have our mixer. The first channel is to play back our sine sweep into the reverb unit. And the second is to record the returns. I've adjusted the level so that we won't clip. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is solo my track, highlight the clip, and bounce it. I'm going to call this Pioneer Spring Long. 
So now we have an effective sine sweep that we could use to deconvolve inside of Space Designer. Let's check out how to do that. First, on an audio track, we need to open an instantiation of Space Designer. Next, on the top right side of the plugin, we need to hit the button marked Deconvolve. So now Space Designer is asking us for those two files that were created when we recorded our spring reverb. So first, it needs the file that we recorded in from the reverb unit. Second, it needs a test signal. And finally, it asks you where to save it. And I'm going to save it as Pioneer Spring Wong. Now, there's a lot of calculations that Space Designer has to do to make this all happen. So it may take a few seconds or a few minutes. So now that that's all done, you can use the load IR function to bring in your new .sdir. Okay, now that we have our sample loaded in, we can go ahead and actually use it. Uh, first, we're going to listen to a sample uh, dry. Then we're going to listen to it with our uh, convolutioned uh, spring reverb. So here's the dry signal. I'm going to turn that down and turn up our reverb. Sounds pretty good. It's got that ringing quality that uh, the Pioneer has. Let's hear how the tail uh, sounds at the end of a sample. Sounds pretty convincing. So now that we've done that in Space Designer, we can actually grab that SDIR and play it back. Sounds pretty similar to our old WAV files. So that essentially means that we can use these files with other convolution programs, such as SIR or Perfect Space, and it also gets us over the problem of having a high noise floor. So thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to tune in for the next video uh, when we actually sample the room.